Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. Want to improve your organization's customer service? Looking for insider tips to knock your customer socks off? Then you're in the right place. Here's your host, Yannick Grant. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, we have with us Robert Ilyason. Robert is an IT consultant specializing in databases and business intelligence, mainly working with automating processes and data flows. He's worked with customers such as Ericsson, Telia Sonera, and mainly IKEA. And he's also a writer, and he keeps his finger at the tech pulse for several Swedish IT magazines. Since a few months ago, he's also a retailer and he's opened an on-man grocery store in the small village of Viking and now expanding in Sweden. So how Robert came across our path was uh, in doing some research for our podcast interviews, we bucked up on this article and these videos that spoke about this gentleman in Sweden who created an automated store where there were no actual employees and all you needed was your smartphone app to basically navigate your entire experience. So I'm not going to let too much of the information out of the bag. I'm going to let Robert explain to you guys everything that's possible. So so without further delay, welcome, Robert. Thank you. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit about your journey um, on a professional level in terms of where you're coming from and where you are today? Sure. I, I'm basically been a tech person for all my life, or almost all my life. I started out with computers when I was 10, started working with it professionally when I was 20, and now I'm 40. I've been working with it for 20 years. I um, basically had a lot of different titles. I've been a web developer once in a time. I was a developer, a network administrator, a database administrator, a BI consultant. That's my current title. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I've been doing all these years is basically solving problems using technology. So people come to me, have a problem, and I use the correct, I find and use the correct, the technology to solve the, the problem they have. Wow, that's amazing. So, um, you know, as, as I mentioned in your introduction, um, in, in researching you and, and reading up on a couple of articles and watching a few videos even, we bucked up on this wonderful app that you created. So could you share with us a little bit about what problem you were experiencing, why you decided to create this app? Yes, absolutely. So basically, I had uh, my son. I was home with him for the first time on my own. He was about six months old back then. And it was late at night, and I was supposed to feed him baby food. Uh, my girlfriend had left me a note exactly through the day, what I was supposed to do. And I managed to drop the last jar of baby food. And it was too late for the stores in Viken, which is a small city, about 4,000 inhabitants. Uh, the stores were closed. And I kind of panicked them because it was my first time. I, wasn't, I didn't know what to do. So I actually took poor Max, my son, put him in a car and we drove to uh, the closest city, which is Helsingborg. Uh, and that was a very, very bad experience because of course, Max was screaming his, uh, his lungs out because he was both hungry and, and afraid and wondering what was happening. And I was sweating all over because of the panic I had. Mm -hmm. And during that trip, I kind of decided that I don't really want to live in a place where I can't buy stuff all the time. But my girlfriend told us, told me that, no, we need to stay in Viken. So I decided if I can't move to the store, I have to move the store to me. And in Sweden, our it's very expensive to have personnel in Sweden, in most countries actually, but especially in the Nordic countries. So having a 24-7 store in Viken was out of the question, at least if you have your ordinary store. But then I started thinking, what if we just remove the personnel? Uh, and it proved to be quite simple, actually, uh, because the personnel that is the, uh, the, the people working in the cash register can be replaced by the customer. Of course, it's not totally without employees because someone still needs to fill up the goods and remove the old goods and you need to clean it and so on. But you don't need to have someone there uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. But by using the app, you can still you can download the app, you can register online, it takes 15 seconds, and then you can use that app to enter the store, walk around, you scan what you take, 
And once you're done, you press a button, and after a few weeks, you get an invoice. Wow, after a few weeks? Yes, it's basically a way for me to cut the transaction costs because I can, of course, add credit cards or different kinds of e-payments we have here in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, but that cost me um, a few Swedish kroners, which is like 20, 30 cents per transaction. Okay. And by, by bulking up all the, uh, the purchases the customer does th throughout the month, I can cut the transaction cost quite, uh, quite a lot. Awesome. So when did the store launch or, you know, when did you start have the app working and everything? It was all up and running in mid-January. Of, of 2016, this year? Yes. Awesome. And since its inception, you're going about, what, seven months now? How, how has the about. experience been with customers? What's, what's the kind of feedback that you've been getting? I think most people in Vegas are quite happy that it exists. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, the, the biggest uh, problems I've had is not with technology. That has just worked. Uh, the problem I've had are basically with my lack of knowledge within retailing. So I don't, I didn't understand the fact that I need parking lots, uh, parking spaces. Uh, I didn't have like uh, things you put your, uh, what do you call it? Not bags, but the things you put your goods in. There was a lot of mi minor things I, I missed, and the the goods I had put in the shelves were also the wrong kind. But now that is turning around, I'm fixing all the problems as I go along, and now it's looking quite well. And I'm trying to now expand into more cities in Sweden, or more villages, I should say. That is awesome. Wow. You know, that to me is um, very innovative, very creative, and it's definitely going to disrupt how retail, how we look at retail businesses now. I mean, I know when you travel to the U.S. in Walmart and Target, you have your own checkout lines where you can check yourself out. But then it's not, I don't think it's with your phone. They, their system allows you to use it on your own without actually interacting with a human being and checking your products out. But your thing really, um, really changes the dynamic, you know, with an app and you really just don't need a human being. Well, that remains to be seen, right? So we've had the self-scanning stuff here in Sweden for quite a while. And that reduces some labor costs, but not at all in, in um, enough for, for small cities to have open the hours I want. Right. Uh, and we even have a lot of up to, say, 2,000 inhabitants. We have villages up to that size that don't have any store due to the cost so they are basically living and needing to go with a car 10 20 30 kilometers mm -hmm. to to buy milk which is sad yes yes indeed especially if you have a family like or faced with a challenge like what you were faced with um exactly okay so how would you rate customer experience in sweden do you find it's different from diff other places in the world it's pretty well for what I, I mostly have that experience in Europe, mm -hmm. many countries in Europe, and we're quite well served from a customer experience, customer service experience here in, in all of Europe, but here in the northern parts, even more so. It, we're quite a, a calm people. We try to help everyone. It's, it's very, very uh, helpful mentality all over. Mm -hmm. So it, it's pretty good. And, and wherever you go, and that's partly why companies such as Ikea has had such a success over the world is we figure things out and we try to make it easier for, for, for our customers, even if it hits our bottom line sometimes. Yeah, that's so true. Could you speak about some of the work that you've done at Ikea and what are some, you know, some of the things that they've done to innovate their own industry? Uh, that's yes and no, because what I can talk about is just the business intelligence part. So that's so fine. That's not really what customers see, oh, but basically okay. we're collecting everything that's happening within the, all the stores. Um, so from the stores, from the, from the suppliers, from the trains, boats, uh, trucks, to basically optimize the flow of, of goods, to, to lower the prices, to make it even more available, and even cheaper for people, to maintain a good quality while lowering the cost and then, of course, lowering the prices to the customers. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you're using the data that you're collecting to really um, provide a better experience. Absolutely. It's not just IKEA, but I think most companies are using that data. So if, you're ever, if you ever 
uh, asked by a company if you're happy with an experience, you sometimes press a button or you're answering a, a survey online, mm -hmm. that all is collected. So I, I think I recommend people to do it because even if people don't look at your specific answer, they look at it in an aggregate and they will identify problem points and they, they will be able to fix it if you help them out. If you're just an, an, if you're not just not happy uh, and don't tell anyone, then the problem won't be fixed. Uh, and that I see in my own small store, in a smaller scale, because some customers are very active in, in getting back to me and letting me know that, hey, this product, you should really have this product or you should not sell this product and this is a problem for, for whatever the reason, for whatever reason, they can help me out to, to basically optimize what I have on my shelves of course, I have the, the statistics from the sales, but they can also tell me, I didn't buy cheese today because the, the, the cheese I want wasn't there. And by I've optimized in the app, so it's very simple. They can just press a button and either type or speak to send me information of what problems they've had. Oh, great. I was just about to ask the question, how is it that the customer engages and gives you feedback, um, seeing that there's no human being, but the app facilitates them giving you feedback right there and then? Yes, it's all in the app. So I'm trying to, to push everything in there so it's easy for both for them and for me. If they have a problem in the store, like let's say they purchase something and... It spoils after a day and they want to return it. How they, they, they communicate again that in the app? Yes. So we have a small box in the store where you can put stuff that are bad for whatever reason or if, or if you just want to return it. Mm -hmm. And they just inform me of that through the app. Very cool. And if you get informed of something through the app, what's your response time pretty much in terms of getting back to them? Well, I have a call center, so it's it depends on when. If you do it in the middle of the night, it will take a few hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but during working hours, it's almost immediate, very immediate good. response. But we have, of course, very few customers, uh, so it's easy for us to to have a very high service. Yes, yes, excellent. Okay, all right. So, Robert, could you share with us how you stay motivated every day? Well, that, that's a good question because, of course, it goes up and down for, for me like for everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm trying to look at the possibilities. I'm trying to be around very positive people. I get support both from my family and also other entrepreneurs in, in, in the area. And by talking all together, we can keep each other, uh, what do you say, we, we keep the spirit high. And so when someone is down, we can always, always help them out to... to let to make sure that they see the possibilities because of course it is hard to start something new uh, it, you don't know if you'll succeed and the costs are sometimes much higher than the uh, the money coming in mm -hmm. but over the time and um, if you just prevail you will most likely succeed at least if it's a good idea right yes that is very true that is very true um, if you, if another business owner came over to you, let's say they are looking to, to do something similar to what you are doing in your business, create an app, but they're looking more to, not necessarily have an on-man store, but maybe have an app to complement their existing store with employees. What is what is some advice that you would give them um, in terms of developing something that would be customer um, oriented? I think the most important thing is to start on paper mm -hmm. and to talk to someone who actually understands user interfaces. Because one of the biggest challenges I see when I download other apps is that they are very cumbersome to use, quite often at least. It's, it's confusing. They, they don't always follow a normal uh, practice, the good practice that most apps use. Mm -hmm. and, and especially for bigger companies, this is quite poor. They, they execute quite poorly in many cases. Right. I think that start on paper, talk to someone who understands how, uh, uh, how the flow in the app works, and do all this before you even talk to a technician. Right. Because if you come to someone like me, I will solve it immediately from a tech perspective. And I'm, but most technicians, me included, we are very, we think in a special way. For, for us, things are obvious that are not always obvious for the, for the end customer. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I have a, a, a classic example of this is of course Apple's iPod. Mm-hmm. When when the act the first iPod wasn't really much better than the competition. It was actually worse in many in many uh, regards. <laughs> but they managed to just tell people that instead of saying that they have five gigabytes, they could store five thousand songs or one thousand or whatever it was, and that's a huge difference. Because everyone understands the song. Right. But back then, at least, no one understood how much a gigabyte was. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a, for a technician, a gigabyte is kind of obvious, but for a normal person, it's not. And I see this a, a lot where you are in a business and you understand the business and you expect everyone else to understand what you're doing. But most people don't. So you need to you need to really start from the beginning and, and have someone who understands this uh, be a part of the of the app development from the very start. Wow, very true. Okay, um, so you're a big technology IT person. So we're going to move into the question of what's the one online resource, tool, website, or app that you absolutely cannot live without in your business? Oh, that, that would be Skype, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, of course, I'm using um, uh, Zendesk uh, for um, customer support, mm-hmm. and they are that's very that's excellent. And if you're using, um, if you have a lot of Note in a personal level, Evernote is also something I use very very much. And I think those are the, the two big ones I use all. All the cloud services I can get uh, my hands on, like for for storage, like Dropbox and OneDrive, mm-hmm. and Google Drive. Awesome. But those are the. If I look at my phone, that, that's what I'm mainly using. Mainly, I think. so Skype, Zendesk, um, Evernote, Evernote, and the Drop, all yeah. the all the the st- the online storage facilities that you can get. Exactly. Awesome. Is there are there any books that have had a very big impact on you on your and your development and your journey throughout your career? There are many books that have had uh, some impact on me, but for this particular thing, I, I don't think so. No, um, I have been very influenced by by uh, a lot of American entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And yeah, of course, like everyone else, I, Steve Job Steve Jobs is a person to look up to, right? He right. did a lot of good things. Uh, and yeah, I think and also Branson is another uh, kind of obvious name. Mm-hmm. But there is one guy uh, that I really appreciate. I'm trying to, annoyingly enough, I don't recall his name by heart. I should. Uh, it's the guy who, who started... Um, uh, Nest, do you know Nest? Nest, no. It's like a thermostat that is intelligent. I think Google bought that company a few years ago. Oh really? A thermostat, as in that takes your temperature? Yes, but it's smart, so it uh, it identifies what temperature you want at what time, so you can go up and down depending on what time of day it is and your behavior. And it's very very simple, and I like things that are, and people that are simplifying things. Is his name Tony Fadell? Yes, thank you. Okay. And, and simplification is is my. Uh, if I had one topic in my life, it's simplification. I want to automate and simplify things, so we get things time for other thing, other stuff. Uh, Which is what technology is all about, right? Trying to make exactly. your life easier, not 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 complicate it more. Exactly which we sometimes forget. True, that's so true. So you get so caught up in the technology that you forget the purpose the technology should be serving. Yes. That is profound. Okay, so Robert, what's one thing that's going on in your life right now that you're really excited about? Something that you're working on either to develop yourself or your people? So the expansion here is the main part right now. Um, But that is going on. But what I'm mostly focusing right now is on version 2.0. So right now, to, to to shop in my store, you need to have your mobile app. You need to go into the store with, with the app. You need to scan the goods. You need to press to pay. In the next version, you will just have to have the phone in your pocket. 
You would go to the store, the doors would automatically open, you go in, you take whatever you want, and then you just leave. After a few minutes, you get an, uh, an invoice, a preliminary invoice, which you can accept or reject. And after 24 hours, you get the proper invoice. So basically, you don't need to touch the phone. It would be much, much simpler for the part of the, uh, for the people that don't really like to use technology. Mm -hmm. It might be older people. It might be people that are just not into tech. And they are afraid of my store today because it's very tech focused. You need to understand technology. Right. It, even if the app is simple, it's still, there is a barrier. But by removing, but I can remove that barrier, basically, I hope. And it looking, it's looking very promising right now. So the phone stays in your pocket. So um, I'm assuming that the technology is so smart that it is able to pick up what, what products and stuff that you pick in the store, right? Yes. Wow. I am truly amazed. I, I, are, is that is your technology going to be leaving Sweden anytime soon and, and making its way to the Caribbean? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll see. People in, across the world have actually contacted me regarding this. And I told them that uh, right now I don't have the time or possibility. There is a team in, in Denmark that, actually, that will actually copy this system. And in Germany they have bought a copy from me. Uh, but I don't have time to support none of them for right now. Right. But I hope that I hope to be able to basically open source this in a, in, a, in a short while, so that anyone wherever in they want to open this, they can just look at the code, they can buy the goods, uh, the hardware off shelf from the shelf, and they can just build it. Okay, so basically you would have provided a framework for the app, and then you just um, like maybe have a license for you to use it. Maybe a license or maybe it will be free. Oh, it wow. remains to be seen. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm excited about version 2.0. Exciting. Yeah, me too. Wow, wow. Okay, can you tell our listeners where they can find you online? Uh, so if you just want to see Narafa, it's www.narafar.se. That's N-A-R-A-F-F-A-R dot S-E. That's in Sweden. Uh Otherwise, I'm mainly using LinkedIn. So if you want to come in contact with me and have a question or whatever, contact me through LinkedIn. That's a good way of finding me. Okay. And just to reiterate for those persons who may not know how to spell Robert's name, it's Robert Iliasson, and Iliasson is I-L-I-J-A-S-O-N, correct? Correct. Awesome. Okay. So before we wrap up the interview, Robert, there's one thing we always like to ask our guests. What is a quote or a saying that you tend to go back to when you're faced with a challenge or an obstacle or you're, you know, you're on a roadblock and you're like, okay. But when you think about this quote, it kind of refocuses you and recenters you to get back on track. Well, I'm actually, I, I think I can use it in this context. One thing I'm actually using from Ikea is a, a statement that their founder said, and I've, that has been at Ikea for a very long time, and it is, most things remains to be done. It, it reminds me that even though I think something is as good as it can be, I can make it better. And even if sometimes it feels like I'm stuck, there are so many things that I can, that can break it free for me. Uh, so that is one quote I'm trying to think about a lot. Awesome. So it's all about improvement. You know, there is always room to make things better. Yes. Even in, even with the current situation, if you think it's, it's, it's not good. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you, Robert, for taking the time to sit with us today and just share, you know, what you're doing over there in Sweden, all the innovation and, you know, the fact that you're creating, you're becoming a disruptor in the retail market. I, I look forward to reading up and seeing more of all of the great things that you're doing there. And I anticipate that you're going to be a pioneer in this, in this industry as someone who has definitely changed the way how, you know, retailers do business and how customers ex have a retail experience. Thank you. And thank you for having me. So, all right. So uh, for all our listeners out there, again, you can reach Robert on uh, through his website, um, 
and you can also reach him on LinkedIn. He said is the easiest way to reach out to him if you want to ask him a question. And it's Robert Iliason, and it's I L I J A S O N. And remember that you can listen to our podcast through iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, and you can also uh, listen to it through our website www.yannickgrant.com. And uh, we encourage you to follow us on Twitter. It's Navigating CX. And also feel free to come on over on Facebook and be a part of our Facebook community, which is a closed user group for all of our past guests and listeners and anyone who is just gung-ho about customer experience and personal development and just really wants to find ways to be innovative and be a disruptor in their industry. We welcome you over there on Facebook. So again, thank you for joining us, Robert. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on another episode of Navigating the Customer Experience. I'm your host, Yannick Grant. We really appreciate your support of this podcast. Are you ready to grow your business even more? Or improve your leadership skills? Or train your team members in the art of customer service? Give us a call at 305-848-0815 or visit our website at www.yaniquegrant.com. That's Y-A-N-I-Q-U-E-G-R-A-N-T dot com. Remember, 305-848-0815 or visit our website at yaniquegrant.com. Our new online course, Mastering Customer Experience and Increasing Your Revenue, is now available. The link for this will be on the show notes of each episode starting September 7, 2016. The first two modules are free, so hop on over, have a look, and take the steps to increase your revenue. Thanks for listening. For more awesome resources to take your customer service game to another level, head over to navigatingthecustomerexperience.com. See you next time.